folks, Muspec Opsmokey here. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about satellite phones. If you've ever been in a situation where comms are down, you realize very quickly how critical it can be to reach out and touch someone in the event of an emergency. Whether you're popping smoke for an exfil, in a remote location where there is no cell coverage, in a natural disaster, or just off the grid, having a satellite phone in your quiver can be a real game changer. And one of the beauties of the sat phone is that it can also be used without giving up your precise location, unlike a cell phone. All you need is an open sky and the satellites will do the rest. Now, for my sat phone needs, I use the satellite phone store as they have several options as well as lots of different plans available to fit your needs. Plus, they have a ton of accessories like Faraday pouches, hard cases, etc. They also have an exclusive offer for the Monkey Nation. Just go to sat123.com slash monkeyworks via the link in the description box below or call 619-399-3800 and tell them Monkey sent you. Mm, that is good coffee. All right, welcome folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your sit rep for Friday. October 22nd, 2021, and uh, coming to you from the great state of Texas. And uh, congratulations, you have survived another week of tyranny. And so pat yourselves on the back for that one. Now, let's jump over here real fast to the boards. Without further ado, let's go, Brandon. And so uh, looking right now, this is uh, actually looking over on Skyglass. Uh, we're sitting at about 312 aircraft up. Uh, for a Friday now I'll hit a refresh on this in just a second uh, just to see make sure our numbers uh, are cleared and uh, and fresh but um, again the pink ones that we're looking at on this are aircraft that don't want to be tracked okay just kind of keep that in mind to uh, give you I mean you really look at there's a lot of pink there uh, so yeah it's always hiding from us so uh, let me jump over here I'm going to do a fresh clear and then we're going to look at the specific numbers uh, of aircraft and then I really want to look at um, now I've got the uh, got the finder actually centered here in the in the middle of Texas you can actually drop this thing anywhere on sky glass I just put in Dallas uh, because it gives me uh, reach on both sides um, but uh, as we kind of look at this let me pull up the the list real fast uh, and we just look at what the highest numbers are on this uh, obviously, we got about 65 trainers up, so that's going to be most of this congestion right here in Texas and this stuff over here in the Panhandle. Uh, and then, of course, over here in the, in the San Diego area seems to be a, a pretty heavy presence, and those aren't necessarily all trainers, okay? I do see a couple T-38s, et cetera, but uh, C-130s is going to be the next uh, big mover on our on our list here. we got uh, 15 C-130s up. If we look over at the C-17s, we're sitting at about 9 kind of low uh, what we would typically be looking at uh, on a Friday uh, midday um, but uh, H60s are at 11 uh, H47s which are your Chinooks we got two of those up and then uh, S76 is one so we got a handful of, of helos up as well we'll look closer at the helos here in just a second because that number has been kind of uh, going up uh, this past week we've actually in the evenings been seeing a pretty significant uptick so uh, it's always interesting when you see that going on, you know, we got a full moon out, um, uh, you know, and so uh, that is actually very, uh, when you have that full moon, it's actually, uh, it helps them out a lot if they're having to do night mission stuff. Okay. So, uh, but here, uh, here's where we are right now. Let me jump over to the other board for just a second. Uh, as we look at the main thing here, I uh, wanted to point out, we do have the Gitmo bird. Um, I know this one is uh, Gitmo 845. Now, there's a lot of uh, um, there's a misnomer on this one. That is actually your base commander. That flight is up. He's up quite a bit. And he goes back and forth between Southern Florida and uh, up in Jacksonville. Okay, so uh, a lot of people see that and they think that it's it's actually Prison Bird or something along those lines. It's not. It's actually a very small little uh, beach uh, twelve, um, and and uh, it's uh, sorry BE twenty is what they go by, but this is a beach twelve M and um, it just holds a couple folks, and uh, like I said, it's the personal bird of the base commander, and so he uses that as his kind of his little Uber back and forth. Okay, now um, over in the U.S., the other parts that I wanted to look at were we actually have some 703s up, and I just wanted to show you the routes on those. Remember, these are spy birds, 
And uh, they seem to be running a long route over Montgomery, uh, Alabama right now. And um, that, uh, again, these things are, are, like I said, they're spying on stuff, okay? Uh, and then this one here, the Aquila 1, uh, also just uh, south of, let me get in a little closer than that. Here's Macon. So this is kind of South Georgia area. Now, remember, we do have, uh, and their range and distance on these are pretty pretty significant. So, uh, But I will tell you, remember, too, that uh, we do have some uh, Hunter Army Airfield um, poppies uh, being loaded in there. So that may be why we're seeing these, okay? Uh, let's see if we got any others. Now, we do have an E6 in the area, too, that's headed down south. Now, that E6 is uh, came out from over the water. Of course, it didn't originate there. That's just where our track picked it up. Uh, but they're heading south. It uh, looks like into the Panhandle area. It'll be interesting to see if they head out over the Gulf again. Uh, and let me just make sure it's air refueler. And we do have some air refuelers up over the D.C. area again today. So, again, uh, they certainly didn't launch out of the middle of the ocean here. Okay, folks. Um, but uh, and then this is Air Force Two, just to kind of point that out. looks like it is headed up to uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, and uh, actually has left Bridgeport, Connecticut, coming back now. So landing in the brown zone. Okay. All right. Now, speaking of brown zones, uh, let's hop over here to uh, the dumpster fire, Mr. October himself, flashbang. And see what he's got going on for today. Now we're going to look closer at the TFRs. I got to pull that up here in just a second. Uh, but um, it looks like he's uh, starting the day at about 9:30, wrapping up this evening uh, at his home in Wilmington, Delaware, at about 8:55. Okay, and so not too much going on. We got Peppermint Patty at 1:30 in her standard uh, press briefing, and then all the out of town, out of town pool calls uh, that normally take place. So. Um, but let me pull up here real fast uh, the, the radar and get a closer look. Hmm. That is good coffee. All right. So this is what we would expect to see. Flashbang is headed home. So we've got the uh, TFR over his residence there in Delaware and uh, up in Wil Wilmington. And then, of course, uh, these right here, this is going to be air show, air show. We've got a lot of air shows going on this weekend. Uh, Orlando's, uh, that's Disney, and not really much else. Uh, these are air shows here. That's going to be Fort Worth Alliance, and that's another one. Now, this one's south of Dallas. Let me just pull in on it. This is actually over uh, the south side of Dallas. That's another air show, which is interesting because I didn't know we did air shows over this area because we got a big one at Alliance this weekend with the Blue Angels and things like that. So, um, But uh, this little red one that you see right here, is uh, actually going to be uh, G.W. Bush. All right, just so you guys know, that is a permanent TFR, always there. Been there for years, okay? Uh, San Angelo, that's going to be one security for uh, bases. And this is our normal border thing here. Now, I will tell you, I'm hearing rumors that uh, we are, uh, we got the mother of all caravans headed this way, and they're going to start popping in, arriving here in South Texas, around the next 72 hours or so. So that's the next three days that things are gonna start to pop over here. So uh, pay really close attention to that. Now this is a hazard uh, that is probably, this one I'm talking about here by, um, down here south of Tucson, uh, fire. Okay, so that's fire hazard. All right, and we get over here to this side of town and it's regular, these are fires here. That's gonna be Beale Air Force Base. So that is air show. And these are security, regular security, same thing with these on the border. Okay. All right, let me back up out of that and we get on with our business. So I uh, just want to point out here, too, as we watch the southern border closely, uh, it looks like Texas and Missouri are now suing the Biden, oh, sorry, did I say the B word, uh, Brandon um, administration uh, to resume a border wall construction. So, yeah, this bad dude has come to a, con a complete screeching halt. And it's pretty evident with uh, the amount of people we see coming into our country, but that's all intentional. So uh, to me, that's ought to be criminal because you're basically uh, national security. You're putting our country at risk by not having a border wall in play and allowing these people to come in unvetted. Um, that to me, uh, that's treason, uh, straight up treason. So, um, all right. Now there is that. Uh, and I want to point out, we're going to get over here to uh, Biggs uh, Army Airfield. But passed one up. Let me just show you guys. Uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, sorry, we were looking at 
Uh, one of the balloons we said is about 80,000 feet. I just want to point out this one was a fresh launch. Uh, this is probably the one we saw, though it's, it's a lot lower than the other one. And uh, the one we were seeing was 80,000 feet. I don't think this one has made it up to 80,000. looks like it's peaked at about just below 70. So 65,000 feet uh, cruising right along. And um, currently over south Missouri, um, headed southeast. All right. Uh, those are spy, spy balloons, folks. Uh, just straight up. No, no covering that anymore. All right. So you see that over your area, do know that they are uh, grabbing some data, okay? All right, now over to uh, Biggs Army Airfield, which is going to be right there in El Paso, Texas, for those not familiar with that. And um, this is uh, a place that we've been watching. Now, notice the board is looking, it's busy, uh, but not showing any flights coming inbound today, uh, although we do have one uh, that is outbound. So let's see if I've got... We do have this. Hi, let me just hover over this 55R. Fly Private, LLC, Holly Springs. Interesting. All right. So that one's coming out of uh, Arizona, Goodyear, Arizona. And another uh, Lear 55 coming out of, uh, let's see, where is that? Colorado Springs. So these are two that are coming inbound, uh, smaller private jets. So there's no telling who's on these. Uh, those are always suspect. If you remember the other day, I was talking about the Phoenix Airs that were approaching um, or actually going into uh, McGuire and the fact that there was just a sea of these little planes popping in and I don't know what their purpose was. <laughs> okay, uh, kind of similar to this. What are they up to? Are they, are they using these smaller planes now uh, to move you know, small families to certain locations? I don't know. Um, but we need to pay attention to those because uh, something doesn't feel right on them, okay? All right, now, these, uh, this is going to be Eastern Airline. I will point out this thing is not, if you notice, it doesn't show on the arrival board. I'm going to expand the arrival board and see if it just has dropped off. Uh, but, uh, you know, anytime you see one show up and then one, <laughs> you, or see, not see one show up and then you see it on the departure board, always makes you kind of wonder, right? All right, let's, let's expand this real fast just for a second and see. Uh, there we go coming out okay so that one came out of Miami um, which makes you kind of wonder right so came out of Miami and then and then it is departing going to right pat okay all right so that is kind of the big say very quiet um, for a Friday for bigs but uh, they typically do their stuff on the weekends when things are quiet down nobody's really looking um, but we are all right now speaking of Eastern Airlines this is is actually Hunter Army Airfield in Savannah, Georgia. Remember, we were just looking at that uh, those 703s that were running out here in southern middle Georgia. Definitely within range um, for grabbing data here. Okay, now uh, that looks like we've got it coming in from San Diego. Uh, and then let's see if we don't. I'm not seeing it. Okay, so it's going from here, Hunter, up to Andrews Joint Joint Air, uh, Joint Base, the Brown Zone. All right, and then we've got a Sierra Pacific that's actually uh, departing, headed to Tucson from there. And then this other Airbus headed over to a Tyndall Air Force Base. Uh, so they're really spreading folks out. Uh, let me expand this a little. I'm going to see if we've got the um, anything showing. So, okay, so that uh, Sierra Pacific actually came in. Uh, no, that's not today. That's a different. Okay, so it it's been sitting then, I guess. Um, that's a 737-500. came in from Laredo, Texas yesterday. All right. Okay. Now, let's move on over to the next. And this is going to be uh, Camber. This is actually U.S. Transportation Command. All right. Now, they had a couple flights up earlier today. Looks like we got a couple more we've actually caught. Uh, the board went blank for a minute there, and I thought we're not going to have anything to see. But... Uh, looks like you got one coming out of um, Elmendorf Air Force Base uh, in Anchorage, Alaska. That's up here. And then we've got uh, this 777-200 coming out of Riyadh. Uh, those, are, those are bringing poppies, folks, 100%. And then we've got this 777-200 um, coming out of Belleville, Illinois. All right. And so these are our poppy movers, uh, immigration planes for the most part right now. Okay. Now, we're talking about those. Let's get over here and look at the Swift Air flights. 
Now, this one I was looking at earlier today. I'll pull it up. We'll look at it a little closer because the board changes. Uh, but you can see a lot of aircraft that are outside of the continental United States, or as we say, CONUS. And uh, then we had a handful that are up in here. Now, these guys have been moving people. Uh, this is their bread and butter, all right? They've been doing this for a long time. Um, but uh, you can see we've got it coming out of uh, Houston, headed to Laughlin, uh, Del Rio, okay? That's uh, headed to the Air Force Base. So more than likely, they are bringing some folks into that location or going to pick some folks up. Um, we got another one that was coming out of Guatemala City to Destination Unknown. And um, El Salvador uh, over to Miami. Uh, but that is not... Um, that's San Salvador, sorry. And then let's see here, Wichita uh, uh, going to Alexandria. Now, those are probably people being deported as they get into Alexandria, 72-hour holding facility. But we do see some Port-au-Prince on here, and it uh, looks like they're taking folks now, which is kind of interesting. This one's headed from Port-au-Prince to San Antonio. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we have the, the front route going in where they're taking people from Texas to there, and now it's coming back to San Antonio. Big question. Um, and then we've got these down here uh, also headed to San Antonio from this um, uh, Valida Mor Morales Airport. And let me see here. Birmingham, Alabama to Asheville Regional. And then we've got uh, Newark, New Jersey over to Chicago. Don't know what those are in play. Uh, but let's get over here real fast. Just look at the board from earlier today. See if it has changed any. Now, um, yeah, these are the, the ones heading the other direction. So we do have um, number two there. You see Phoenix headed out to Alexandria. That's bringing some people for out, uh, probably deportation. Then we got this other one from Mexico, Destination Unknown. Miami headed over to uh, Valley, which is right there in uh, by Brownsville. That's down in the very bottom tip, uh, border town um, in Texas. And you got another one, Brownsville, taking some folks up to uh, Gary uh, or Chicago International. Laredo over to Port-au-Prince. So there you have it. So that thing was around. It looked like it did a round robin there. Um, probably took some people back uh, out of the country. And then uh, Alexandria took some folks down there uh, to El Salvador. Um, and let's see. I think those are the main ones. So, okay. Let me get back over here to our other board. Now, this is, let me get over to the next piece. This is going to be Eastern Airlines. I just wanted to show you guys um, I mentioned in our last sit rep the fact that we are taking folks that were pre-staged that came out of Afghanistan. Um, actually, I, I, I was talking with James yesterday, uh, Pastor James uh, Cadiz, uh, about the same thing. Uh, we pre-staged folks. So this is the second wave of people coming into our country. And what's happened is they got held up in various countries. So they were in, in, in Paris or France. They were in Germany. They were in England. They were in Ireland. Um, and so this is one of the flights where we've actually gone over, picked up people, and we brought them into Philly. Philly is our processing hub for the most part right now. That's where a lot of the internationals are coming in. And then from Philly, they're going to all these other bases, okay? And so just uh, this landed uh, four hours, 17 minutes ago, and it came from Shannon, Ireland. And uh, that is Eastern Airlines, okay? And uh, you can see the flight leg right there. So... Uh, kind of smoking gun again. And then this is Airborne Express. Now, keep in mind, these cargo planes have the ability. They slide on. They pull out the cargo, uh, you know, uh, racks, and they basically slide in uh, some new seat tracks and uh, or, or platforms that seat, have seat tracks on them, you know, or they're already preloaded with seats. They just lock them right in just like as if they were doing cargo, but instead they got seats, and then they put bodies on them. All right, and they bring people uh, around Atlas Air does it all the time. Uh, you'll see them actually slide in those uh, those same systems into C-17, C-130s. Uh, they just push it in as a middle, you know, skid, lock it down, and uh, seats are already on it, and um, off they go. So this one actually uh, stopped for gas in Terra Sierra, uh, which is one of our prison watch locations, and then went to uh, New Jersey. All right, McGuire, uh, Joint Base McGuire, Lakehurst. Uh, that's when we watch, uh, we've been watching actually and talking about for a while now. But uh, you can see yesterday that bad dude was in Ramstein, then it went to Terra Sierra, then Terra Sierra uh, across the drink. Okay. All right, moving right along. Let's get over here to Guantanamo Bay. Talk a little bit about Guantanamo Bay. 
Uh, today, looks like we've got regular flights coming in. we got Airborne Express out of Norfolk, Virginia. Um, we've got our, our Uber uh, moving legal eagles out of Jacksonville. And then we've got our regular Tuesday, Friday bird, uh, which is that little uh, E55P um, Phenom uh, 300 is what that is, Embraer. Now, uh, that is, you notice the arrivals and departure boards match. And so that looks like um, it's kind of been kind of quiet. So, uh, but let me point out next week, uh, we do have some things coming on. So this is the 22nd. Uh, so probably early next week, Monday or so, maybe even over the weekend, we should start to see um, some aircraft actually start to roll in um, because we do have a U.S. versus uh, this this con dude for a, uh, a motion hearing. And so um, that right there is going to pop onto our calendars. And let me see if it continues on into November. Yeah, there you have it. And uh, actually, this is uh, Khalid Sheikh uh, Mohammed. And that is all month, next month. So we should see an uptick here, um, at least from, you know, because these aren't classified. So going into November. So it, it starts next week and then it'll kind of start rolling and pick it up. Okay. So um, there is that. And let's go over here to some of the Gitmo bird flights. Now this is six in 631JS. Uh, just want to point out it's coming out of Asheville, North Carolina down to Opelaka. Um, Opelaka is one of our watch sites. That's a black site, we believe, along with uh, one of the Lauderdale locations. And then we've got um, uh, it actually rolling out of Opelaka up to uh, Okeechobee. Now, it's kind of been doing that back and forth. Uh, you can see this is on the docket for tomorrow. This is what's on right now. Uh, but you can see uh, we get into this. Started out, that bad dude uh, flew from Lauderdale. This, this is all today. Uh, to, to Guantanamo, uh, came back from Guantanamo, went to Lauderdale, Lauderdale to Asheville, North Carolina, and then from Asheville down to Opelaka, and then now it's headed over to Okeechobee, and then it looks like it does a couple little uh, hops around. It's going out to uh, the, the islands here, the Caribbean, uh, then back to Miami. So we'll uh, keep an eye on this one because typically when we see that, somebody, uh, especially when you start getting this international stuff, might maybe get in the shakedown. Um, and same thing with the Sopalaka piece. So it uh, could be some good news. Maybe somebody is uh, taking a ride. Um, and so there is that, um, which would make sense, okay? Um, when you think about all the activity and the increased activity we've been watching uh, take shape with the helicopters every evening, where we were up to 53 on, I think, Monday or Tuesday night, uh, it's been in the solid, you know, high 30s, um, most of the week in the evenings, um, which kind of indicates to me maybe some dagger operations going on, and, and um, this may be um, kind of what we're seeing. Typically, when we see some big arrests take place, we start to see these agency birds doing some island hopping stuff. Okay, uh, we saw it before Maxwell was taken down. We saw it before um, Epstein didn't kill himself, um, and so um, – you know, we'll keep an eye on these birds. That's why we watch these birds and see if we get more of that. Um, it could be an indicator of a big name about the drop. Okay. Okay. Now, 301 AZ, this is another one of our um, Max or our uh, Guantanamo Bay birds, agency birds, and uh, currently coming out of Oakland, California, headed into Wisconsin, uh, Janesville, Wisconsin. Now, I don't know if this one's associated. This could be just a regular uh, regular flight, but this thing's been down in San Antonio and um, uh, kind of flying all over the place, Las Vegas. So it's been kind of everywhere. They This could just be normal people riding, taking a ride on this thing because they do uh, that from time to time as well. Okay. All right. Now, we were also watching the other day the C-202 flight. Um, this is actually uh, going to be either Director of Homeland Security or the Assistant Director of Homeland Security. Uh, but he flew down to Savannah. Now, remember, we were talking about Hunter Army Airfield taking in a bunch of poppies. And if that's the case, um, then this right here may have been why he went down there. But he basically round robin. He came back the same day. So we thought maybe either he's going down for maintenance because that's the Gulf Stream and that's where they're headquartered. Or he was going down for something else. And it looks to me like it was the something else. All right. So probably heading back to report um, to uh, Mr. October uh, flashbang what was going on in savannah okay now department of no justice in 721 al now this bad dude was rolling out of uh dominican republic 
over to San Juan, uh, Puerto Rico. That took place yesterday. We were actually watching this flight uh, yesterday as well. Now, remember, this is going to be kind of your go team for the DOJ. So I don't know what they're doing in that general area, um, but they seem to be boots on the ground uh, there now. And so looks like they are in San Juan. Maybe there's a case going on or somebody got arrested or something. We'll, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll hear about it soon enough. But, um, but typically you see them do that. Uh, they'll bounce down coming out of the brown zone, Manassas. Um, they'll drop a team off and then they'll head back and then they'll come back later in the week. So, uh, people are kind of commuting, I guess is what you could say. All right. Okay. Now let's, uh, talk a couple things real fast before I get into this last piece, throw a couple terminologies at you that are new, um, and you can use them in your quiver. Uh, but I, I thought, uh, these were relevant and I thought these were kind of interesting. Uh, first one is going to be called vax hole. Uh, that is, uh, somebody that is basically, uh, that has uh, complied with the mandate, but is, uh, shaming you for not. Okay. Um, and so that's a uh, vax hole. All right. And the next one is mansplain. Uh, and that's when, uh, men, we tell, um, women, you know, that, uh, how to do something that they already know how to do. Okay. Mansplain. And the last one here is we see, this is active. Uh, this is called jellyfish. And it's when you go to fix a problem and create other problems, uh, either two problems or more. Okay. Um, and basically make the situation worse. And that's kind of where we see, uh, taking shape today with the, uh, uh, flash spring administration, right? So, uh, three new words. You may hear me throw them out there uh, from time to time. I just wanted you guys to be in the loop, uh, so you know what those mean, and uh, uh, feel free to use them uh, at your leisure. Okay. All right. Now, this is one thing I just want to touch on because um, there's a lot of folks talking about it, and I want to just kind of peel the onion a little because I want you guys to be prepared for what's coming. Um, but uh, all the stuff going on in China right now, we, we talk about uh, our, our problem with the boats not being unloaded and how we're going to kind of change other ports and things of that nature, uh, thinking we're going to fix all of this. Um, and then we look at uh, FedEx and a lot of them. I'm even my, my own company is actually suffering from the FedEx side of it, where things are taking two and three times longer to get here. Um, and that is because capacity has been bought up and. Uh, somebody has got priority over all of uh, the normal stuff and um, don't know who it is. Could be Amazon, could be our government, um, but somebody's got priority and they are bumping all of us back. So ain't no doubt about it. They bought up some capacity and that's what's, what we're seeing now. Uh, but the, the piece is if you get over here and you look at what's oh, off our coast right now, now this is Long Beach in LA. These are actually the boats that are just sitting offshore anchored uh, waiting to come in. And these are ones that are coming in. Uh, these are, these are not moving. These are anchored boats, but you can see everything that's sitting in the ports, uh, really close. And then these that are sitting off cause they can't get into the ports. Um, but here's the problem. Even if you were to unload these, um, if you go back to China and then China's woes, China is actually about to take a major hit because of this whole, um, real estate company that they have. And that company is basically, about to go belly up and it, it's worth like 26.9% uh, of China's GDP and it's worth uh, in US dollars. I think they're up to about $400 billion in US that they're about to default on. And so if that happens, their economy is going to come crashing down. Um, going to take a really big hit at a very vulnerable time. Now, China's also running into energy problems. They can't, um, they can't run their factories full time because uh, they don't have enough coal to run their factories. So they can't power them. And so they've lost about 40% of their production or manufacturing capacity um, or output because, or actually they're down to 40%. So, um, so yeah, that means they're not manufacturing this stuff. So even if you got all of these boats cleared, um, you can't, there, there's not going to be anything to replenish it because you've took a, you know, you've taken a big hit over where they get all the stuff for these boats that are on these boats. The other piece too is containers. They can't fill anything on the backside till these containers get back. Okay. So all these boats that are sitting out here with hundreds of containers on them, if not thousands, um, uh, are there, it's replenishment, right? So they basically take these empty containers, they get them back and then they fill them back up. So now, even if, we got all these offloaded. It's 14 days to get those back to, um, back to the ports to get them reloaded. 
And so you've got this massive span of time within the supply chain that is not going to correct it. And so uh, the Flashbang administration is trying to fix and solve a problem about, you know, loading in the ports and getting the, the ports running efficiently. Um, but it's really not going to solve the issue. And so this problem is going to be here for a while, folks. So you need to start kind of just putting that out there as a warning. We got to be very smart and start. You haven't already started taking precautions of uh, prep, prepping and preparing for this. Uh, you need to do so because now is a time. Uh, it's not going to get any better. All right. And uh, other than that, you guys be safe out there this weekend. Stay frosty. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.